I'm a high school 3D printing teacher and in under six minutes, I'm gonna teach you the best settings in Bamboo Studio to have the cleanest and most easily removable supports. So I just wanted to get right into the settings uh, here at the beginning of the video. So you can see all of the settings that I changed. Most of them were in this advanced tab. So one of the thing I wanna talk about early is just make sure that if this advanced tab is checked on, maybe you don't see the settings that I do here. Just tog toggle this switch on that we have access to all of the settings. So I did some extensive testing on this these support settings using a lot of different um, settings. I'll talk about that later in the video. I am a high school CAD teacher, um, so I teach a lot of 3D printing, architecture, stuff like that. Uh, so I love the analytical approach to problem solving. I spend a lot of time making sure that these settings are what I think are gonna be perfect for my situation. Um, so going through these here real quick, I think the tree supports are gonna be the ideal scenario for most prints, I'm not saying all prints, but for me, most of what I do, tree supports, the auto setting, default style, and then making sure they're on the build plate are gonna be the best. Uh, now, again, changing into advanced settings here, making sure this toggle switch um, is switched on. Uh, I turned my initial layer density. It was started at 90%. I put that down to 70%. The top Z distance, which is essentially going to be the distance between the support and the start of the actual print. I changed that from 0 0.20 millimeters to 0 0.24. Uh, the top interface layer, I just added one to that. So it starts at two, I turned it up to three. The top interface spacing, I changed from 0.5 millimeters to 0.1 millimeters. And then the support object XY distance, I changed to 0.38 millimeters. Now, these support settings don't do too much unless you see video evidence of them working really well. So as you can see on the screen here right now, it was the perfect removal. It was super easy. I like to try and get my supports to remove by hand, a little bit of pliers if necessary. But as you can see, it, there's no scarring left. Uh, the overhangs that were um, flat turned out really nice. Um, all of the like circular sections still came out really nice too. Overall, I was really happy with this. And again, all of my testing kind of lent itself well to this point. Um, it made it super, super easy. One thing I do want to say about these settings real quick is if you are using a different layer height. Um, so for instance, right now I am using a 0 0.20 millimeter layer height. If your layer height is different, these settings should change. Mainly your top Z distance should change. Uh, be modified. So if it's a 0.12 layer height, for instance, you might want to go something like a 0.14, 0.15, etc. So you don't want to stick these settings on any layer height. The layer height is going to dictate your support settings ever so slightly. So with me printing in a 0.20 uh, millimeter layer height standard, that's going to be what works for me. But if the modification is going to be, or if you use a different layer height, please make sure you adjust accordingly there. Now, if you're just looking for the settings and you're going to head out afterwards, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. If you're interested in learning how I got to this point, how I did all of my testing, etc., I'd love it if you stick around for a little bit so I can talk about the nerd stuff that makes me excited. So one of my students actually designed this part here. Um, so this is a like quarter section of a Lego TIE fighter. Uh, that this student made. So the reason I use this to test my supports, uh, and if you saw my Cura video talking about supports as well, you can see I use the same thing. It's just really nice because there's flat sections, um, there's angled sections, there is circular sections, there's small overhangs, there's just a lot of uh, different pieces that'll really test your supports. And it's the perfect section to use. It doesn't take long to print. Um, it's just overall an ideal situation to use. So again, I'm a high school CAD teacher, so I like this analytical approach to problem solving. So I did a ton of tests with this. So essentially what I did is I copied or cloned this piece um, a lot here. So I would have like six of them. Sometimes I did uh, nine of them as well, just like smaller pieces on the plate here. Now, what I did is one of these themselves takes about two hours to print. But the nice part about Bamboo Studio is that you can set each individual object to have different settings. So if we head over into objects here, you can see the one that I have selected currently right now. If I click on that individual piece down at this section here, I can change this support setting to whatever I wanted it to do. So for instance, if I turn this off here, you can see if I click on the other one, it now has the supports turned back on. So what I did is I put on a piece of notebook paper, essentially the orientation of the pieces themselves on the build plate, write, wrote down the settings that I used, uh, and then just let the printer do its thing and then compared how easily they were to remove from each other. I started with normal supports uh, and it was just extremely difficult for me to get any normal supports to work nicely, even with a big interface distance, etc. It just wasn't working quite well for me. Z top distance. Uh, I just couldn't get anything that wouldn't mar the printing up pretty bad with trying to remove it. So I went to tree supports. I thought tree supports might be the best to start with. They were. Um, I tried the different ones with the organic um, and all kinds of stuff like that. The default 
tree support seemed to turn out really well uh, for me. And uh, then I did a lot of different testing with those as well. They were doing okay, but not great. I saw a Reddit post that suggested some different changes, so I tried those. And while my fixes weren't the exact same as the Reddit post, the Reddit post certainly pointed me in the right direction. So that's when I found that these settings, again, for me, just are ideal uh, in terms of what I'm trying to do, the, the shapes that I have, the filament that I have, etc. It may not be the same as yours, but just the, I think this is a good starting point for everybody to kind of base their stuff off and, and adjust accordingly. So that's it. That's going to be a pretty quick video. I just want to thank you so much for stopping by. Let me know down in the comments below how these settings work for you. Again, I think they turned out really well. I'm happy with these for sure. Um, but if you know you need any modifications, if something worked better for you, please leave them in the comments below. If you have questions, concerns, uh, etc. I would love to hear from you. So thank you so much for taking the time to watch the video today and hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.